An estate is an enormous amount of land that surrounds an almighty mansion. It can also be a car. Here are the three most popular small estates, the ones with wheels, as searched for on Auto Trader and with a monthly PCP price of around £300. This week I've got the Skoda Octavia estate. Poor old Skoda used to be the butt of a million automotive jokes, but that hasn't been the case for a good few years now. Skoda belongs to the VW stable and as such offers excellent value for money. Everybody might be talking about SUVs these days, but there is still definitely place for an estate car. The Volkswagen Golf hatchback is a popular small family car, but what happens if you need just that little bit more space? Well, you might go for this, the Volkswagen Golf Estate. It's the most expensive of our trio, but it is also the most polished. Peugeot's little load lugger is the 308 SW, two letters that mean it's got an elongated rear end. It is one of the better looking estates on the market thanks to an aerodynamic design, so it ticks the box if you value style highly. I've got the SE trim level this week, which means no sat nav. On the other hand, you've got Apple CarPlay, so you can get to it that way. And you've got VW's funky screen, which means before you touch something, it starts activating it. Uh, also, what is this? Who knows? For a good while now, Golfs have set the standard in this class for their interior quality and user friendliness. That's still the case, but it is quite a plain interior. It makes good use of the space though, you should be able to find a nice comfy driving position and all round visibility is the best of our three. Parking should be quite easy too, thanks to the Golfs boxy-ish back end. There is a stylish simplicity in here because of a distinct lack of buttons and most of the controls are hidden beneath this touchscreen, but that makes it very fiddly to get to them on the move. And no matter what position I've found, seat up, seat down, wheel in, wheel out, half the dash is blocked from my view, which is not very good at all. We've loaded up our estate cars for a weekend of family camping, but which one has the most user-friendly space in the boot and which one of us can erect as the quickest? I don't do camping. Oh my god! I can't even do this! It's raining again! This is one of the many reasons why I will never go camping. has got the smallest engine here, a 1.2 litre three cylinder. So if you're holding it in a game of top trumps and the word performance comes up, get rid of your cards. Now this car is geared more towards comfort than handling dynamics. And if you want to keep it that way, do not go for any bigger wheels or tires when it comes to the options list. Oh, you sound like you know what you're talking about, Vix. I like to think I've got a couple of decades worth of experience <laughs> under my belt. And the rest. <laughs> Now I'm going to sum up the driving experience in one word about this car. We haven't got a bleeper with us. Okay. Uninspiring. Cutting, isn't it? Four syllables as well, well done. Yeah, thanks so much. But I don't know whether it is a great representation of Peugeot, this car. Yeah, I kind of feel like it's not actually. Peugeot do some really lovely interiors with kind of ambient lighting along the panoramic sunroof and light interiors, and this just isn't that. No, but it has got this. Oh. Daylight. I love a panoramic sunroof. They're like a grand as an option, but I used to think not worth it, and now I think I wouldn't be without it. And you've got rain on the roof, and the sun's coming down, and it looks like you're, you're a leopard. Get a rainbow. Oh, okay. <laughs> it got leopard spots on. Have I? Yeah. I've also got. I've also got zips on my Isofix in the back here, and the only other car I've ever seen that on is a Rolls Royce. So we're heading in the right direction. <laughs> they looks like there should be more going on up front. Yeah, there are hardly any buttons for anything. You have to do it all through the touchscreen, including the aircon, which is always really annoying. Menus, they're, they're easy to flick through, but then there's so many sub-menus and tiny icons and stuff, and when you're on the move, it's just really hard to use. 
especially for me because I genuinely have a shaky left hand and so I did about five functions at once. <laughs> you do get the most amount of kit though on this so DAB, Bluetooth, sat nav and everything is standard across the range. Mm, not bad. First of all, is it Octavia or Octavia? Say Octavia. <laughs> I'm not I doing any more singing. You're not singing. Let's <laughs> call oh, the yeah. whole thing off. Now, it's got something called an idle control valve, which is designed to stop you stalling. So, when you go into first gear, I've got my foot off the throttle, but down on the clutch, I'm letting the clutch go. The car's automatically giving me some revs to take off. And it happens in reverse as well. Weird. Like idiot proofing the car. It's a car for dimwits. But if you're that worried about it, why don't you go and get an automatic? It is actually the quickest car here. It's got a 1.5 litre engine, which is the same in the VW, but it's got more power, 20 horsepower more at 150. And it is marginally the longest car here, but the handling doesn't belie that at all. And it is surprisingly sort of mature and it is a refreshingly relaxing and quiet car to be in. I think I might just love it, which I do because it's bright red. <laughs> and I love bright red cars. Do you want something fancy in the back? Oh, I do. Here you go. Oh, another panoramic. And this one is also a sunroof, is it not? Yeah. That's a mighty big sunroof. Whoa, it's doing like five things at once. The infotainment system in here is really good. The graphics are great, it's clean and sharp, and all the menus are nice and easy to use. Got a couple of knobs and easy buttons on the side. We haven't got an inbuilt sat nav in here that comes on the next trim level up. But apart from that, it is all good. Don't you think sat nav should be standard across every car now? Yeah, it seems weird to have one without it. Yeah. Have you got a wing mirror for a Skoda? Okay, seems like a fair swap. <laughs> Why do Skodas have heated rear windscreens, Vicky? Because you can keep your hands warm when you're pushing them. <laughs> she knows that one. <laughs> they, those jokes, they were so unfair now. It's so yeah. wrong. But hilarious in the 80s. Hilarious. You do, you know, the 80s, I'll tell you about them one day, right? Fit for my time. <laughs> so the Golf has got the biggest steering wheel by far. And the Golf hatchback is a very capable car and it's lost none of that in its elongation process. Mm. All the big words today. <laughs> <laughs> the suspension cushions you well over these camping humps. And the fuel economy figure is pretty much similar to the others at about 58 miles to the gallon. Now it feels by far the most mature of the group, so it would definitely suit those who value a little bit of subtlety and sensibility. Is that why I find it a really boring car? Oh. <laughs> I can brighten things up a little with this. Ah, uh, the old panoramic sunroof. My Zaz for you. It's gonna take all day to come back. Fortunately, the infotainment system is very good in here. All works really well, it's logical, it makes sense. The only weird thing is when your finger kind of goes anywhere near it, it comes up with loads of stuff, which I find a bit unnerving. Yeah. It's anticipating what I'm gonna do. And you can, if you wanna pay for it, you can get a bigger screen, which comes with gesture control. What's gesture control? Basically, like you can wave around at the screen and it'll do stuff, but it never works particularly no, well. No, and you look like an absolute moron yeah. turning around looking in the car. Do you need a wand to do it? No, 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 just your finger. <laughs> the Peugeot 308 SW might be the most handsome of our trio and with the biggest boot space, but it takes third spot this week. In second place, it's the ever likeable VW Golf Estate, but in first place, with slightly more power than the Golf and just that little bit cheaper, it's Skoda's Octavia Estate. 